Hello and good afternoon. My name is Martin Coward and greetings from Puerto Rico where we're broadcasting live this virtual sanctuary that we've been creating every day since the beginning of the pandemic to love and support each other through these challenging times. And I can't help but wonder if all that we've been doing up until last week has been preparing us for the most challenging time of all. The birth, if you will, of the reign of life. And it was, and make no doubt about it, it is a painful, painful birth. But it's over. We are into the reign of love. And it's time to celebrate what we've achieved together. And the way I would like to suggest that for all of us is that, as you would for any mother, human mother, who's recently given birth to a new baby and gone through all of the pains of childbirth, that she would need some space and some time to learn to love, to fall into love with herself and her baby. I'm going to invite us all to do the same thing, to give ourselves some space some room, some permission for self-love. That's what I'm doing for myself. I've been in Puerto Rico now for about <clears throat> three weeks, and really, I haven't really allowed myself to really practice what I teach. And I teach abundance and prosperity. And I have to be honest and say that since I've been here, I've been running against the clock of the to-do list that I had created for myself of things I needed to get done, things that I wanted to accomplish, to move my business for all good, good things, by the way. But I'm so focused on outcome, getting those things done, I couldn't really relax and feel present to being here. My mind was too caught up in the doing and things I needed to get done up until last week. Up until last week, when all of a sudden, my whole, our whole world was disrupted. What we saw, what we thought was impossible. It never happened. We saw the foundation of our democracy and our sacred capital and our structures and our monuments desecrated and attacked by our own president. And I can't help but feeling <clears throat> that we've all been preparing for this. Brutal and vital, horrible, horrible attack on our country and ourselves. And if you're not feeling wounded from that, I don't know what to say because I think that if you give yourself permission, I don't care what side of the fence you're on, you're going to feel the wounds of what happened. So I'm going to encourage us all this week to take some time and give ourselves permission to reset our calendars, to reset our to-do lists the way I'm doing, and practice, really put everything aside and practice self-love. That's the only thing that matters. That is the core of all I teach in prosperity coaching is self-love. Because the more we love ourselves, the more we strip out of the way, we see just how magnificent and powerful we truly are. It is through that, from that place of self-discovery of self-revealing of the truth. And I think that's what we got. We, we found one of the things that was pulled back for two things. 
some painful stuff that was going on below the surface has now been revealed. But that's also some painful stuff that's probably been going on under the surface in our own lives has been revealed. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to. That's how we work. We work by projection. So let's, as a way, we could possibly even be grateful for what we experienced. Because for me and for many of us, what we experienced was a revealing of some of the things that have kept us stuck inside our own dark shadows. And so if we could let the events of last week, which triggered me deep into my dark night of the soul. And I went into my dark night of the soul within months, shortly after the election of Trump as the president of the United States. I got went into so much fear that what came to the surface was all the fear and all the pent up anger and frustration that I had been holding back all my life as I was a little boy. Because that, in that instance, four years ago, it was like the, the, the bullies, the bullying my father, the bullying other and little boy and friends, the bullying, the bullying in me all came to the surface. And so for the last four years, I've had to, as I came out of that darkness of the soul, I've had to own that darkness in me myself. <laughs> and I've been able to open up and love those parts of myself. As we prepared ourselves for this event that happened this past week. And I think it woke up a lot of people. I know it woke up a lot of people. It woke me up, certainly. It woke me up to the point where I actually realized I was trapped. My, no, the, ego's, the ego is not intelligent, but it's very, very clever. Which is why we need things like this to wake us up from our own egoic traps. Like I said earlier, my trap was earlier, here I was in this beautiful place, and instead of spending time using it as a place to create some space and love myself, I was just angry with myself for not marching out to the orders of my big to-do list that I created when I came here. And all that went away. That's why I said, no, that's just matters. I need to, I need to take care of myself. I needed to let go of all that. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mindy, glad you're here. Here we all are at the other side of this cosmic event, let's call it. How are you feeling today? I was just sharing that I'm actually come through this. I'm, I'm back in the light again. And uh, I've given myself permission to truly, truly let go of everything I thought I needed to get done when I'm in Puerto Rico. To give myself permission for this last week to truly, truly practice what I teach. Practicing the art of self-love, practicing the art of being present. So that I've got something to take back with me. To share with the universe. So we've got a lot of healing to do. We've been through this is this is just the breakthrough. We have a new baby to raise. We have a new world to create together. And I'm giving myself permission this week to let go of all the ideas I had about what I thought I was creating, to rediscover myself, to rediscover a deeper part of me that I perhaps never knew existed. And I've had a lot of opportunities in life, but I can tell you right now, I'm going to use this event as an opportunity to get to know Martin, to love Martin, get to know that powerful, what I call joy the wise woman in me to guide me into, not just into this new year, but into finding my role, exactly what is my role in the creation of this new world. I thought I knew what it was, but I have to be honest with you. Now, after last week, I'm not sure. I think all the things I've been working on are foundational parts of it, we were all very good love. But how that's going to show up, I'm curious to know. And I know, but I do know one thing. <clears throat> I have to create some space for myself this week. And I want to invite you to do the same thing. What we experience, whenever we experience a storm, especially an emotional storm like we experienced last week, 
on the surface is only a tip of what's going on inside our subconscious. So we need gives some space for that to catch up. For us to connect to that deeper part of ourselves, a true and more authentic part of ourselves. We can find our role, our place in this new world, as Eckhart told you, a new earth is grounded in love and truth and prosperity. And I think we've woken up a lot of people too. <clears throat> I don't know what my role is in this field, but I'm grateful for the time and the space and the opportunity that I have to spend the rest of this week in this beautiful, beautiful paradise to find out. So I'm gonna dedicate my <clears throat> my week to self discovery, so to permission to true. Every time I do this, by the way, every time I do this, I break through to a deeper, deeper truth of who I am. And when I do that, I find a deeper sense of purpose for myself. That's why I'm inviting it for inviting you to do the same, because I have never found. By saying yes to the heart. Go wrong. And my heart is telling you, Martin, create some space for yourself. Let go of all the to do's on your to do list. And dedicate all of your energy to love. Self love. Getting to know that divine part of ourselves now. We've all been opened up for the new impression. So I can only say I'm excited about this piece. That'd be crazy, crazy to have this awareness that's coming from the divine and not listen to it. Joy the wise woman is telling me right now to let go, surrender of all the things I thought were so important find a deeper sense of who I am and a new sense of purpose. I invite you to do the same. I'm probably going to spend a little time this week on going through my program, one that I developed this summer called Practicing the Art of Being Present, Your Key to Living a Life of Love, Joy, and Prosperity. And I am going to be practicing that myself this week 100%. I'm curious curious to find out who and what I am and what I'm here for. Because I have a I have a feeling, I have a deep sense, a deep intuition, if you will, that what I'm if I just let go of the reins, <laughs> if you will, and let the divine within me take the reins for a full week, I'll discover what it is I'm here to do, and I'm excited about that. I'm really excited about that. So if you're not sure what that looks like, you can go to our Financial Mystic Sanctuary Facebook group, and you will find two teaching units, Practicing the Art of Being Present Part A and Practicing the Art of Being Part, part B. One of them is creating a virtual sanctuary for your life, which I think we should, we should, we should do here, turning your life into a sanctuary. Turning yourself into a sacred, a sacred human being. Identifying and understanding your sacred nature. Your magic, which is where all your magic is, and all your beauty, all your love is deep within us. So my encouragement this week is to just stop and go and let go of all the things that we've really, all the stuff that we thought matters, none of it really matters. Really, does it? And yesterday, I think it was Saturday, I was, I don't know if I was in an upset or a down, I was all over the map. There was one minute I was in a fetal position on the bed, trying to get comfortable, trying to make sense of what was inside me that And then the one minute I was on dancing on the beach in the moonlight, celebrating freedom. I'm celebrating. I'm mourning. 
I am mourning the loss. Remember this phrase. When the ego mourns, grieve for what it has lost. Our souls rejoice by what they have found. But we have to transcend and include. We have to include within us our physical being. Bring all that fear and frustration and darkness up into the light. And a friend of mine sent me this beautiful, beautiful poem on Saturday. I was sitting on the beach. And I got to say, it was just a joy sitting on the beach on that, that, that day as I was in one of my good moods. Because I was in my good spaces. And my friend, a yogi, a friend of mine, sent me this beautiful yogi. It's a poem by this yogi, yoga poet. And I want to share that with us today. And I just think it's such a beautiful, beautiful poem. It's written by a yogi poet, and her name is Sharon Gannon. Um, magic is a shift in perception. Poems from, 20, from 1972 to 2019, a memoir of sorts. I just want to give some credibility to where this beautiful poem came from and how grateful I am for it today and for it this week as it helps us understand the transcendence, the epilogue, apocalyptic <laughs> world we are currently living in. And remember, we remember apocalyptic does not mean the end of the world. It means the end of the way we see the world. So I'm going to say it is the end of the reign of fear and the birth of the reign of love. That's something we can get excited about. So let's get still and let's listen to the words in this poem and then we'll meditate. And then we'll meditate. Transcendence is an apocalyptic event. It takes the past as it leaves the present. Change is always the same. If you care to look deeper into it, it is form passing into form. It is orgasmic. It is the expansion of truth and reality. <clears throat> Through the phases of duality. It is the expansion of truth and reality. Through the phases of duality. Like the moon, it moves from necessity. Guaranteed full promised monthly. This is bold, like love is bold, naked, revealed. It has no body, and nobody can have it. Love, that is, has no body, and nobody has love. Love is the body. Blood, the intoxication, the invitation to this apocalypse, this standing naked. Psyche, stripped, is the flesh. The matter is the mind. Thought is form. Words come next. Wow. That is such a beautiful poem for right now in this moment. And I'm so grateful for Sharon. Sharon Gannon. You can find her on the internet. Maybe I want to buy her entire collection of poems. I certainly want to investigate some more because that was absolutely beautiful. And so appropriate. Mindy, you want to add anything? This is the only one that's actually spoken into the chat. If you're here, please say hello in the chat so I know you're here as I set up the timer here for this meditation.
Absolutely. I'd be delighted to read it again. Be my pleasure. Let me find it again. Hold on a minute. Okay, here we go. One more time. This enjoy this poem about the relationship between the apocalypse, transcendence, and the body. So think of it in those terms. This is this is about our a poem about the relationships between the apocalypse, the, the revealing, the new the new the new site transcendent, transcending, moving into our higher state of consciousness, and our body. Transcendence is an apocalyptic event. It takes the past as it leaves the present. Change is always the same. If you care to look deeper into it, it's form passing into form. It is orgasmic. It is the expansion of truth and reality through the phases of duality. Like the moon, it moves from necessity. Guaranteed full promise monthly. This is bold like love is bold. Naked, revealed. It has no body and nobody can have it. Love, that is, has no body and nobody has love. Love is the body. Blood, the intoxication, the invitation to this apocalypse, this standing naked. Psyche stripped is the flesh. The matter is the mind. Thought is full. Words of the rest. Words of the rest. So as we prepare ourselves for meditation, there's the bell. The bell to wake us up. Beckoning, the invitation is always there. The invitation to surrender all the beliefs and opinions and junk in our egoic thinking minds to let go, fully surrender, and take the invitation from the divine right now and open your hearts a little bit fuller to hold us Love us, protect us. Look what it's always done. Always will do. Care for us. Let go and let the Divine Mother hold and take care of us. And be still.
allow the sound of that bell and the sound of my voice to wake us up so we can reset, let go, create space, empty ourselves of all of our thoughts, our beliefs, and opinions, and accept the invitation of the divine love
There's that wonderful bell to wake us up. So we can let go of all our planning, all the stories, all the junk, all the fear. Just fall back into the stillness of unconditional life.
There's our final bell. Welcome back. How are you feeling? Did you create some space for yourself? Even if just for a second? Or that mind starts putting more things in? What I find happens to me is that all of a sudden I get the space and then all of a sudden something comes up, some thought, an idea. And I begin to run with it. So the bell rings again and then I, okay, let that one go, let's go to another one. Great. Isn't that a wonderful feeling? You just let go and you fall deeper inside yourself. Yeah. My encouragement is to give yourself as much space as you need right now. Rediscover who you are now on this side of this major shift. Because you're going to find that deeper notch that you went into. You're getting closer and closer. In that deeper place, we discover our, who we are and our purpose in the world. And I have no doubt, you, me, and everybody, as we tap into that deeper sense of ourselves, that deeper knowing of who we are, we will find exactly our sense of purpose, the role we're going to be playing in the year to come, in the years to come after that. So from a practical perspective, if you haven't already joined us on the Financial Mystics Sanctuary Facebook group, watch the videos, Practicing the Art of Being Present, Part A and Part B. I'm going to be going through them this week. I think it's important. But I'd like to have, give everyone the support and the encouragement to let go of all the things they think that matter. It's the only thing that really matters. It's love. Practicing the art of love with the divine in the short, finite period of time that we're in this planet as human beings. Learning to love ourselves is up and how do we use our finite amount of time to serve the infinite parts of ourselves. Yes, grateful and desire to be alert and present. To wake up to the truth. And feel our way into this new world, into this new world. It's not just, we've been practicing this for years, but what's so exciting is that we I think we're the events, but I mean, the whole world, the, there's a collective consciousness waking up. Or they won't evolve. Now it's a choice to evolve or perish. Just that simple. Evolve or perish. What do you choose? I'm going to choose to evolve. I'm going to choose to evolve. I've only got a finite amount of time for this infinite spirit within me to enjoy this world. I want to let it take the reins. I'm going to practice the art of getting to know that part of me so I can distinguish between when it has the reins and when I have the reins. That's what i got to be honest with. The first three weeks of my trip down here, part had the reins say the ego is not intelligent but it's very clever it created the illusion and took the reins until I woke up last week the 
Yeah, I would imagine so. It's your orbit. And you That's the orbit we are attracted to. So this evolutionary process, among those that it's not surprising that the evolutionary process that you're experiencing is within your orbit. Not a surprise at all, is it? I'm also going to post on my Facebook page as an event. Yeah, you know, a couple weeks ago on the solstice of the winter solstice, I had a guest on here, a Deborah Lynn Driscoll. Uh, just brilliant. She really helped guide us through that day and give us some insight into what this all meant. And she's having an event tomorrow night, and I'm going to post that event on my Facebook page that I'm going to attend, and I'd love for some of you to attend. Uh, I'm really excited about having her now in my life and in my orbit, and I think I, I learned a lot from her. I think we all can learn a lot from her. And so I'm going to post uh, information about her event um, on my Facebook page uh, later so that you can join me tomorrow night because I'm going to definitely attend this event. So I'm going to encourage you to as well. And uh, in the meanwhile, uh, continue to practice the art of self-love, practicing the art of being present. And if you're not sure how to do that, go to the Financial Mystic Sanctuary Facebook page and there will, you will see my very first video, my very first self-made webinar video and edit job. It's a little rusty, but I think it'll get to the point, and I think it'll be helpful to you. And I'm gonna re I'm gonna rewatch. I'm gonna reteach it. I'm gonna be teaching it this week. So take a look at it. Yes, yeah, she was in Barbados. She lives in Barbados, and I will definitely do it. I will definitely post information about that because I'm sure she would love to have you join us. So in the meanwhile, may love and prosperity prevail.